Woo! <laughs> I bet you didn't expect that. Yes, it is that time of the season. Our lovely director of the Wangshu Funeral Parlor will be returning this fall, but beware. It is said that those who skips her will get cursed of their next five-star summon to be a zombie. On that note, Hu Tao may sound scary, but she doesn't bite. However, in combat, that is when she is scary. With her trusty little ghost, she will obliterate anything in her path with her powerful charge attacks, her spooky burst, and most importantly, how adorable her animation and personality is till she sends her enemies to the Shadow Realm. Today, we're going to talk about if you should pull for Hu Tao or not. Let's proceed cautiously and jump into the video. Hey, yo, what is going on, guys? And welcome back to another Kitchen to Back video. And today, we're going to be going deep into this video like six feet under into Hu Tao's talents and kit now before we get started with the video make sure you guys hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel for your next coffin purchase discount and don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you guys don't miss all my latest uploads or whenever I go live on my streams and of course so you guys don't get cursed now let's view my Hu Tao's build all right so here are her ascension stats so as you can see you're gonna want the silk flower. These are all over the Wang Shuin. You'll just find these a lot. Uh, yeah, Wang Shuin, there you go. You're gonna also need a lot of Whopper flower nectars. And of course, the Jade Dragon boss, which is gonna be located down Liyue. So, yeah, those are essential materials. For the stats, she has 25k HP and 1600 attack. Elemental Master is at 210. And for the crit ratio, she is at 82% crit rate and 232% crit damage. So pretty much it's the usual DPS stats, except with the HP, which once again, another HP scaling unit on the channel in a row. Like, talk about coincidence, am I right? Now let's go move on to her talents. This time, I'm actually going to start off with Hu Tao's elemental skill because this talent dictates everything in her kit. Basically, once you cast her skill, Hu Tao will immediately lose 30% of her HP and enter the Paramita Papilio state. This will increase her attack based on her max HP. All of her attacks will be converted to power damage, which fortunately cannot be overridden. She has resistance to interruption and her charge attacks apply the Blood Blossom effect to enemies. Blood Blossom is a mark to your enemies that will take power damage every 4 seconds and it is considered elemental skill damage. This is kind of similar to Tartaglia's Riptide except Blood Blossom is a lot slower and is not so impactful for her combat. Still, it is nice to have some extra damage. Her Paramita Papilio will end when the duration is over or when Hu Tao swaps slash dies. In other words, you're going to want to have Hu Tao stay on the field as much as possible to deal damage until her Paramita Papilio state ends, like Zhao, Ayato, and Sino, etc. For a talent level at 9, the activation cost will be the same regardless of what level. Attack increase is at 5.96% of her max HP, which may not sound a lot, but 5.96% of her HP will be added onto your current attack. This talent is worth the investment, especially since, again, this will determine everything that is going to be going on in her entire build, and it's going to be also where Hu Tao's HP scaling comes from. Then for the Blood Blossom, it's decent, but again, not important for her. For her duration, is 9 seconds, and the cooldown is 16 seconds. Although, sometimes you may notice when you're playing Hu tell that you might be able to extend her duration for her skill. This is due to hit lag for certain enemies or casting her burst which is great for using it as your last attack before swapping. Now let's move on to her normal attacks. This is her most significant talent and it's not because of her normal attacks, it's her charge attacks. Although her normal attacks does contribute to her DPS but her charge is her primary source of damage. What's great about it is her charge deck does not have ICD which means every charge deck from Wu Tao will be able to cause a reaction. Due to this you will be hearing from me a specific character reoccurring a lot in this video. Now onto her damage multipliers at level 10 she has a decent normal attack multipliers and her charge attack multiplier is pretty high. Since she has good multipliers, it is definitely worth to invest upgrading this talent and again, this is where majority of her damage comes from. Now onto her burst, it's pretty straightforward. She will summon her spirit and dealing power damage in a large AoE. When hitting the enemy, she will heal a percentage of her HP. This effect can actually increase up to 5 enemies, making this more effective. And to add on, when Hu Tao's HP is below or equal to 50%, both damage and HP will increase. As you can see from her damage multipliers at level 8, she has two different types of skill damage, which one being default and the other being low HP skill damage. Again, kind of similar concept to Tartaglia's burst multipliers. Obviously, the low HP skill damage has higher damage multiplier, which incentivizes for you to be always 50% or below HP. So not only can she spook her opponents, she can also nuke. For her HP regen, it's 9.22% and low HP regen is at 12.3%. Again, same as the multipliers, the low HP is in general more effective than the default. Again, keep in mind, you can increase this further depending on how many enemies as you hit with her burst. Alright, so moving on to her Ascension 1 passive called Flutter By. When the Paramita Papilio state activated by the guide to Afterlife ends, all allies in your party, excluding Hu Tao herself, will have their crit rate increased by 12% for 8 seconds. So this is a nice buff for her team, especially with certain characters that can snapshot. For those that doesn't know what snapshot is, it is when an elemental skill burst slash passive effect 
is fixed to the stats of the character while the skill was casted. For example, for this case, Shangling's Elemental Burst can snapshot this passive and will have 12% crit rate on her power NATO. Even when Hu Tao's A1 passive buff duration ends, the buff will expire once Shangling's Burst ends. Pretty cool, right? But only certain characters can take advantage for this. For those that can't snapshot her passive, this will be a minor DPS improvement, although nice for your characters holding on any Favonius weapons. For her Ascension 4 passive called Seguin Roge, when Hu Tao's HP is equal to or less than 50%, her power damage is increased by 33%. Now this is why you hear Hu Tao mains losing their minds whenever they get healed. This passive applies to pretty much everything for Hu Tao's DPS, which is why it's pretty important to be equal to 50% HP or below. Again, going back to her Elemental Burst, this encourages for you to play at 50% HP to take full advantage of this passive. This is quite crucial and what makes Hu Tao HP's management pretty significant. And for the last passive, called the more the merrier, when Hu Tao cooks the dish perfectly, she has an 80% chance to receive an additional suspicious dish of the same type. Right, I forgot about this. She was the first one to have the cursed dish passive. I mean, I guess that's cool. Now onto her talent's priority, I will start with her normal attacks, which again, this is her highest source of DPS. I would recommend as much as you can, or at least level 8 and higher. Next, I will go for her elemental skill, since this increases her attack conversion, which does make a difference. I would recommend level 7 and higher. And finally, her burst, which is her source of AoE power damage and healing. Also pretty important to have for a potential nuke king and survivability, so I would recommend this to be at level 7 and higher. If you are going to do a burst nuke build on Hu Tao, then I would focus on the elemental first, then skill, then normal attacks. Regardless of the level priority, you are going to want to upgrade all the talents, so I would start prepping your Mora and talent books. And those are the talents, now let's move on to the news section that I decided to add in this video. How to play Hu Tao. So Hu Tao's playstyle is pretty straightforward. You're always going to want to start off with casting her elements of skill, then follow up with her few charge attacks. You will want to maintain her HP to be at 50% or below HP. Sometimes in certain stages like Spiral Abyss, you will start with 100% HP, which no need to freak out, it's fine. Just keep on playing her normally by casting her elemental skill till she reaches that HP threshold. Now onto the most important part about her gameplay is her attack combos. When you play Hu Tao's charge attack, she will do one normal attack then charge straight through it without stopping. Just doing this will go through certain enemies and sometimes end up being too far away from them. Luckily for Hu Tao, she can fix this by jump cancel or dash cancel. Jump cancel tends to be recommended more towards C0 Hu Tao while dash cancel for C1. My recommended combo for jump cancel is 1 normal attack, charge and jump, and repeat, or 2 normal attacks, charge and jump, and repeat. The 2 normal attack combos potentially has higher DPS, but it has harder to achieve consistently. For me personally, I usually add in variations, so sometimes I do 1 normal attack, then charge, or 2 normal attacks whenever I need more stamina. As for the dash cancel, it's basically the same as a jump cancel, so you can do 1 normal attack, charge dash, or 2 normal attacks, charge and dash. With dash cancels, they are faster than jump cancel, but can take more stamina. For this combo, is recommended for C1 Hu Tao players, but it is still feasible for C0 Hu Tao players. It's just a lot easier to do with C1. The more practice you have with this, the further you can increase your DPS, and all the combos I listed can be added and mixed up as a variation depending on your situation in combat. And for Hu Tao's burst, I would only use it whenever you need to heal or whenever you get the chance to at uh, below 50% HP. You won't be using Hu Tao's burst too often unless you are doing a burst build. And that's our gameplay, now onto her constellations. Alright, so starting off with the first constellation, C1, called the Crimson Bulkhead. While in a Primita Papilia state activated by the Guide to Afterlife, Hu Tao's charge attacks do not consume stamina. So now you all know why I recommend the dash cancel combo when you have this constellation. This constellation is arguably one of, if not the best constellations in the game. This is a massive quality of life constellation for Hu Tao's gameplay and can even be a DPS increase. You could potentially squeeze in more charge attacks and still have leftover stamina for your next character. This is a very valuable constellation to own, but you do not need it for for Hu Tao to be good. Up next, we got C2, Ominous Rainfall, increases the Blood Blossom's damage by an amount equal to 10% of Hu Tao's max HP at the time the effect is applied. Additionally, the Spirit Soothers will also apply the Blood Blossom effect. This is a nice deepest increase to her Blood Blossom, but honestly, kind of unnecessary since this constellation still doesn't impact her gameplay as much as her C1. Then we got C3, Lingering Carmine, which is three levels up to her elemental skill, nice to have for more attack increase. Then we have C4, Garden of the Eternal Rest, upon defeating an enemy affected by the Blood Blossom that Hu Tao applied herself, all nearby I allies in the party, excluding Hu Tao herself, will have their crit rate increased by 12% for 15 seconds. So this is exactly the same as the A1 passive, except you would need to defeat an enemy while having the Blood Blossom. This is pretty situational and would be even useless in single target battles. Not really worth it to trigger this constellation. Then we got C5, Floor Incense, which is 3 levels up to her Elemental Burst, nice for extra burst damage. And finally, her C6, 
Butterfly's Embrace. Triggers when Hu Tao's HP drops below 25% or when she suffers a lethal strike. Hu Tao will not fall as a result of the damage sustained. Additionally, for the next 10 seconds, her all elemental and physical resistance is increased by 200%. Her current is increased by 100% and her resistance to interruption is greatly increased. This effect triggers automatically when Hu Tao has 1 HP left. Can only occur once every 60 seconds. So this is interesting because it looks pretty crazy. But of course, the downsides are also demanding. You will need to lose 25% or below HP, which can be difficult to achieve. And the fact that this can only occur once every 60 seconds is pretty ridiculous. However, this is still a massive buff and can be strong to invest to. This constellation is mainly encouraged for speed running. Overall, her constellations are all not bad. Mainly the ones that stood out to me were, of course, her C1 and C6. If you are interested in her constellations, then it's either going to be her C1, which is a great stopping point for free to play, or might as well just invest all in for the whales. Other than that, Hu Tao as C0 is still powerful and can clear the hardest content in the game with ease. For Hu Tao's artifact sets, she has great options. Starting off with the 4-piece Crimson Witch, it's just easily a perfect set to fit on her. Even though she can't fully utilize the stacks, she still benefits from the passive. This set is an overall balanced increase to her DPS. I highly recommend this, especially since this is available in the strong box. Moving on to Shima Nao's Reminiscence. Now, this is an interesting one, and I guess also a controversial. This set is technically Hu Tao's strongest set for her charge attacks. However, the main condition is granting the artifact set effect, which is to lose 15 energy while getting normal charge and plunging attack damage increased by 50%. Unfortunately, Hu Tao doesn't generate a ton of particles. This restricts her burst usage, which she does sometimes rely on for her DPS and survivability. You also won't be able to cast her burst immediately after casting her skill, because again, once you use her skill, you're gonna lose that energy. This is something to keep in mind on what are you willing to trade in for, more burst usage or maximizing charge attack damage. Both Crimson and Shimanawas are pretty close, so use whichever that has better substats or whichever you prefer by gameplay. Up next, we have 4-piece Gilded Dreams, which is another viable option. It's slightly worse than Crimson, but depending on how good the subsets are and what team you have, since this relies on having the same slash different elemental types in your party. Keep in mind that this set can lose value when using EM buffers like Sucrose. For the 2-piece combination, I would go for 2-piece Crimson for the power damage bonus, or 2-piece of, where is it, Tenacity for the extra HP percentage, or any of the EM sets. You can also use the Marsha Say set, but this set is still relatively new. If you're doing the burst build, then 2-piece Noblesse is also an option. Alright, so that's for the artifact sets. Now let's go and move on to her stats. For the Sands, you're going to want either HP or EM. HP is generally easier to get and also increases healing while EM has higher damage ceiling. This also depends on what weapon you are using. Like if you are using Dragon's Bane, then I will go for HP or with Sabahoma, I will go with EM. You want to balance out both stats since they are important to Hu Tao and you don't want to have too much for one of them, otherwise you will have diminishing returns. Up next for the Goblet is Power Damage Bonus and the Circlet is going to be either Crit Rate or Crit Damage. Moving on to her subsets, you're going to want to prioritize EM, Crit, and HP. Prioritizing whichever you need more, like if you're Hu Tao struggling to have crit, then of course try to get more crit substats, or if you're below 100 EM, then try to focus more on EM. For her recommended stats, here are the following. You're going to want the general 1 to 2 crit ratio, 100 to 300 elemental mastery, and HP at at least 25k and higher. If you are still unsure, you can always swap off pieces and try it out in game to see which has the best results. For her weapons, it's straightforward. All weapons I mentioned in this video are the ones, in my opinion, that benefits Hu Tao the most. So starting off with the three-star weapon options, actually just one weapon, White Tassel is a great start for new players or free-to-play players. Crit rate subset plus normal attack damage boost, which does contribute to her DPS. Since she scales highly with HP, she doesn't need to worry about high base attack from weapons, making White Tassel a solid option. Although it is the weakest among the other options that I'm going to mention in this video, but it is still viable. Moving on to the 4-star weapons, Hu Tao does have more options. Unfortunately, there aren't much for free-to-play. Only one free-to-play weapon I can mention, which actually surprised me to be on this list, is Missive Wind Spear. The obvious downside is this weapon is an attack stat stick, but the extra EM bonus at R5 is why it's on this list. The condition is pretty easy to trigger, otherwise, like White Tassel, only use this if you don't have any other options that I mentioned in this video. Also, this is an event-exclusive weapon from version 3.1, so some players won't have this. Um, next is Black Lift Pull, which yes, it is a free-to-play weapon you can buy from the Stark Glitter Shop, but is not recommended to buy this weapon just for Hu Tao. It's one of her weaker weapons, but it does have crit damage as a subset. 
However, if you have this in your inventory, then you can use this on Hutel. Though, the passive doesn't help Hutel at all, so this will be purely used as a crit stat stick. Then for the battle pass, she has deathmatch, which is still great for a crit rate stat stick. But the one I'm more excited to talk about is this weapon, Ballad of the Fjords. This weapon is one of the best weapons to use on Hu Tao. Crit rate subset and a massive EM buff from the passive. A perfect fit for Hu Tao. Especially with high refinements, wow, this weapon becomes very competitive with a few 5 star options. Unfortunately though, that wouldn't be possible since this weapon literally just came out in the battle pass. So R5 currently is impossible, plus it's a long and expensive investment in general to R5 weapons from the battle pass. However, if if you aren't interested in any other weapons from the battle pass and you are not planning on getting Staff of Homa, then it is a strong option for Wu Tao. Then for the gotcha options, I would highly recommend Dragon's Bane if you have it. This weapon scales very well with the high EM and the passive is also strong on Hu Tao. And with refinements, this weapon becomes competitive with her 5 star options. However, this weapon loses value with external EM buffs like Sucrose since it provides so much EM from this weapon. Even still, this is a strong weapon for Hu Tao. Then we have Lithic Spear which is actually an insane weapon on her, especially with refinements. You can easily maximize this passive with her current best team in my opinion which is Xing Shou, Yelan, and Zhongli. All characters are from Li Wei which can maximize the attack and create from the passive. However, this is a limited 4 star weapon from the weapon banner, which most players won't have this. But if you do, then this is another strong option for her. Now onto the 5 stars, same thing as the 4 stars, run any crit weapons. I don't think there are any EM 5 star polearms, so mainly just crit. Of course, her signature weapon, Staff of Homa, is by far her best in slot. It provides the HP bonus with the extra attack and crit damage. Up next weapon may surprise some of you, which is Staff of the Scarlet Sands. This is Sino's signature weapon. The reason why this is good on Hu Tao is again, she highly values elemental mastery. With this weapon, you are going to need to build a lot of higher EM to gain more value from the attack conversion. Oh yeah, and of course, the crit rate substat. With this build, 4 piece Gilded Dreams actually becomes more valuable with this weapon. Again, if you have this and no Homa, this is Hu Tao's second best option. And probably for the last one is Primordial Jade Wing Spear. It's mainly a crit stat stick. And those are the weapons I recommended. For more in detail with your weapon strength, here is the weapons ranking source from Kaching's main. I'll link in the images down in the description below. And now let's move on to our teams. For Hu Tao, she honestly has one team that she excels at. Although I have a couple more, but I'll be going more into detail with Hu Tao's best team, which is Reverse Vape. There are many variations for this team that I will be also going over. But in general, for this team, you will want at least one Hydro and the rest are Flex. The Flex will most likely be some form of defense utility. Due to how she can vape every single charge attack, this team will multiply her damage even further. And the best unit, which some of you may already know this, is of course, Xing Shou. Xing Shou and Hu Tao is one of the most powerful duos in the game. No matter what team comp you use with Hu Tao, you are 90% of the time is going to want Xing Shou with Hu Tao. His off field hydro application being so consistent plus damage reduction and also sometimes vaping is a powerful synergy. Only time Xing Shou will be replaced is if you have Ye Lan. Although Ye Lan as C0 doesn't apply enough hydro like Xing Shou to have Hu Tao vape every hit, unless you have Ye Lan C2, then she can solo sustain vaporizing with Hu Tao. Otherwise, these two are going to be your best hydro options. And that's the core for Hu Tao's vape team. Like, that's it, really. The rest are flex based on what you need for your team. Speaking of the Hydro characters, you know how I mentioned you can use either Xingxiu or Yelan? Well, even better, why not use both? Yelan with the A4 passive and the offensive damage, and Xingxiu with the damage reduction and Hydro application, and now, Battery. Having those two creates Hydro Resonance and it provides HP bonus, which benefits Yelan and Hu Tao. It's just, mmm, synergy. Now for the flex options, you're going to definitely want some form of defensive utility. Shield is mostly recommended since Hu Tao really wants to heal. If you have him, of course, you know who it is. Zhongli is the best option, the universal resistance shred, and the strongest shield in the game. Of course, any other shielder works too if you don't have him. So someone like Layla, Diona, or Toma. Although Toma with pre C6 Ching Shou can steal Hu Tao's vapes. Otherwise, as long as any other shielder doesn't interrupt Hu Tao's vapes, then they will fit perfectly. As for the last slot, you can go with another sub DPS slash animal support, for example, Sucrose being a strong option to buff EM, which is highly valuable for Hu Tao, or for a sub DPS option, Shangling with her power nato is another powerful option. The main thing for this team is as long as you have your powerful hydro applier like Xingxiu or Yelan, that's the only thing that matters while the rest are by your choice. You can always mix and match based on what characters you have. Here are some of my favorite team compositions for Vape. Those are her character options for a vape, but for the rest of the team, she is also pretty strong in. The next one I recommend is the Verdescent Venera vape team, which is the referring to the 4 piece Verdescent artifact set. It's basically the same thing as a vape team with another variation, but the playstyle itself is very different. Basically, you want another power unit to swirl pyro with an animal buffer to trigger the 4 piece Verdescent Venera set. This team focuses more on enhancing Hu Tao's personal DPS. Someone like Sucrose again or Kazuha are the best options. As for the power units, it depends on what you need the most. For survivability, Toma or C4 Yanfei are great. Although for Toma, you're going to need C6 Xingxiu to not have Toma steal your vapes. 
As for Yanfei, this build only works if you have received force, so you can do a shield bot build. Another option which is actually surprising is Amber, but only if you have LG for the end equipped on her, then she also becomes a powerful option. Her burst has strong and fast power application, which works really well with LG for the end to buff your team. As for other power options, they can technically work, but the ones I recommend are easier and have better synergy for this team. If you need some form of defense on your team, then you can still have Zhongli or Dia on the team. And for the last team, Hu Tao is also pretty strong in Mono Pyro. This is the only time you will not be using Xingxiu or Ye Lan. The main core for this team is to have one power unit, one animal, and flex. For the power options, Shangling will be the strongest sub DPS, and you can add that even further with someone like Bennett, which yes, I know you may all be like, but you said Hu Tao only scales with HP and not with attack, which means Bennett doesn't work well with Hu Tao. But for this team, Bennett's purpose is to be mainly a battery, healing for your other teammates, and to be a buffer for Shangling. And for the animal options, Cosmo will be the overall best due to the elemental damage bonus he provides. There are of course alternatives like Sucrose at C6 or any other animal support works. This team is more for just pure power damage, but they have recently released a new character that can perform better than Hu Tao in this type of team archetype. And that is Hu Tao's team compositions, now let's move on to her showcase. So we got the usual team that I will be using, the double hydro, here we go, just uh, boom boom pow. You know, just apply everything with Yelan. Although there's corrosion here, so that is something to worry about here. But to showcase, this is at full health, right? That was only 98k damage. But if we were to actually show a half health though with Hu Tao, that would be a different story. Hundred and sixty nine K, there we go. Could have been a lot more if I was longer, but you know it's okay. There we go. Here we go. Easy, 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 easy. Okay, so this is the double GLT. Here we go. So, just go Zhong Li, you know, whatever you want. Shield, and then Albedo's thing. Use Alt, his burst, to get his EM buff. After that, Xing Shou's burst. Then go crazy with Hu Tao. Here we go. Since we're out of stamina, we're gonna have to do the charge that combo. There we go, now we're gonna respawn our thing again. Oh, they're chasing back after us, so we're gonna respawn our thing here. Pretty easy, as you can see. Very doable! Oh, okay, I did not need to do that. While they, I was distracted doing that, everyone else is attacking here in the middle, so we're gonna just go this. Woo! And then after that, move on to the next. But as you can see, this team is very, like, safe, you know? If you want something, like, more survivability than this team, is there for that, so... I completely missed that, and last one, just... Alright, up next we got the Double Hydro and Double Pyro. I actually always wanted to try out this team. Because this is technically Hu Tao's offensively strongest team. But we'll see how this works, and I missed there, but that's okay, all good. Not bad. I mean, function is basically the same idea, but as you can see, this is kind of what I was afraid of. I don't have like Shangling built properly, so that's why the showcase by itself is not necessarily the greatest. Oh, and he already left. It's all good, because we can just do this. Just try to melt the shield down. Uh, 
Time to run, time to run. Okay, here we go. You do your thing. I'm gonna go do uh, this. Here we go. Run. Get out of the way. Get rid of this. Here we go. Here we go. And then go here, here, here. Full set up everything. Here we go. And this should heal up Hutel back up. 75k, easy. There we go. Boom. Very nice damage. Alright, up next we got the Pyro Swirl team. Here we go. Honestly, this is kind of like the best free to play team I could think of for Hutel. So we're gonna swirl. Get the Pyro in there. Perfect. Everyone's in the middle. Great. And now we're just gonna move here. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. And people boom, 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 boom. And ba da ba doom, ba da ba doom. And then go back to Sucrose. Swirl everybody in the middle. Great, great, great. Okay, so now we're gonna fly again. And then we're gonna wait until Xing Shou is there. So we're actually a little bit early in the rotation a bit. So since we're out of stamina, I'm just gonna do some jump cancels here. And a dash. And yeah, same idea. It's basically the same idea. Alright, up next we got Mono Pyro, which I actually always wanted to try the same out too. So here we go. Swirl up Pyro. Set up everything. Here we go. So this, for this case, you're gonna just forget about Hu Tao's A4 passive here. And just go crazy with Chung Ling and just do pure power damage as much as you possibly can. Yep, yeah, come back. Yeah. There you go. Not as much, yeah. There you go, but it doesn't matter because we're battering as much as possible. It's just gonna be pure pyro damage. Oh, we unfortunately do not have enough chungling energy here. Although that's all me, but you know it's all good. There you go, not bad, not bad, not bad. I'm gonna go boom, and then just go boom. Yeah, this is actually a lot faster. I'm not gonna lie. This ain't bad. This ain't bad, yo. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. I couldn't even use my burst. <laughs> Damn! And that is everything you need to know about Hutel. Now, like usual, let's get into her pros and cons. Starting off with her pros, she has still the highest single target damage in the game, which makes her competitive as a power DPS. This is a massive upside, which is that she doesn't need to rely on Bennett. As a power unit who doesn't want Bennett, this is a pretty rare scenario to have, which is great because you can now use him in another team comp for your Spiral Abyss runs. When mastering her attack combos, it will show rewarding results. She can speedrun the hardest content in the game, and finally, she just has the cutest attack animations in the game. I mean, I mean, just look at her. Now moving on to her cons, without learning her charge attack cancels, you will encounter positioning issues, hence potential DPS loss. But even if you learn her charge attack cancels, she can still run into stamina issues, especially at C0. Her playstyle with the 50% or below HP might not be for everyone. Majority of her damage is single target, and her only source of AoE is her elemental bursts, especially running for PC Manawas. And lastly, instead of being reliant on Bennett for her team, she is extremely reliant on Xing Shou or Yelan, so it's kind of like one or the other. As you can see, Hutel's ups and downs are balanced, but I would say her cons are more minor and can be fixed by players' dedication to investing and practicing using Hu Tao. So now going on to the question of this video, should you pull for Hu Tao? And my answer is, if you need a power DPS slash like her gameplay, then yes, she is quite worth to pull and invest to. Even though we just got a recent power DPS who's been proven to be strong, she is still one of the strongest characters in the game with one of the highest damage ceilings and strongest build potential. Only time I will pull is if you already have strong enough power DPS or if you don't enjoy her playstyle. We also have Rise of the Inventi coming up next, which if you have eyes on them, I'll wait until the next banners are officially announced, then you can decide from then if you need Hu Tao or not. Well, that's going to do it for this this video so if you guys enjoyed it make sure you guys hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel for more of type of content don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on my latest uploads or whenever i go live on my streams and that is everything all i got thank you all so much for watching and as always until next time stay epic and